Okay, so welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast we're going to look at how we can collect responses using the keyboard. So the objectives for this screencast, uh, just the, the, the one in this screencast, we want to be able to collect responses from the keyboard and to be able to know what, pre what key was pressed and when it was pressed. So we've al already encountered uh, some ways in which we can collect responses via keyboard. So I've used the wait keys and get keys functions. So here we're going to take a closer look at these functions and how we can use them in our vision science experiments. So first we need to switch to, to spider. Okay. So the first thing that we want to look at is to know exactly what keys were pressed. So often um, we want to know not just that a key was pressed, but which particular key was pressed. So these um, functions that we've looked at in Psychopy, so these get keys and wait keys, return a list of strings, where each item in the list is a string representation of the key that was pressed. So let's um, write some code that's going to tell us what um, um, string corresponds to a particular key press. So first let's import our necessary packages. So we need to have a, a window open while we're doing this. So we're going to import the visual. And of course we need the event. So let's open our window. And close it. Okay, so we're going to have our key collection via a event.wait keys function. And now all we're going to do is print keys. So we're going to open a window, wait for the user to press a key, and then print what gets returned in this list here, keys. All right, so let's run it. Okay, so it's waiting for me to make a response. So what I'm going to do is press the D key. So I'm going to press D now. Okay, so you can see now when we've print, printed um, the content, contents of this variable keys, see so it's a list with one item and it's the letter D. Okay, so why is keys a list? Why isn't it just a string? Well, it's useful that sometimes we might, or participants might, press two keys at once. So it's useful to have this as a, as a string. So let's see if we can, sorry, as a list. So let's see if we can um, see this behavior. So what I'm gonna do is try and press the keys S and D at the same time, okay? All right, so I press them simultaneously and you can see that in this keys that was returned is a list now with two items, an S and a D. Okay, so this string that represents the keys is uh, pretty straightforward for most of the keys. So you can see when I press the D key, I get a string with the letter D. But for some of the keys, it not, might not be immediately obvious what it's going to be. So in vision science experiments, we often use the arrow keys. So an indicate, you know, in interval one or interval two or tilted left versus tilted right, for example. So let's run it again. And this time I'm going to press the left arrow key. So let's see what that gives us. All right, so we can see that the string representation of the left arrow key is the string left. So let's just check. So if we press the up arrow key, you might expect that the string representation will be up. And we can see that, that it is. So if you're ever unsure about what the string representation of a particular key is, you can write some code like this that allow you to, to easily determine what, what it will be. Okay, so the next aspect of uh, collecting responses that we're going to consider is the possibility of restricting the available keys to be pressed. So during an actual experiment, a participant usually only has a narrow range of keys that can be meaningful. And we often don't, we want to protect against an accidental key press um, ending a call to wait keys or, or doing something that we, we don't expect. So what we can do is provide um, the um, key functions 
with an argument that restricts the, the keys that, it's, that it listens to, if you like. So say, for example, if we know that participants can only respond by using the left arrow or the right arrow key. So it would be sensible to provide this argument key list. And so this is a, a list of keys that you want this function to listen to. So we want it to be left and right. Okay. All right. So what this is going to do then is it's, this wait keys will only uh, finish up, will only return if the key that's pressed is a left or the right arrow. If I press another key, it'll still keep waiting for a key press that it, that it wants. So let's see this in action. If we save it and run it. Okay, so it's waiting for our key press. What I'm going to do is press the spacebar. You can see nothing happens. So the spacebar wasn't in this list of um, valid keys, so it'll keep sitting there waiting for a key. So now I'll press the left arrow key, and you can see this was on its list of, of valid keys, so it's going to finish up and return. Okay, so it's also important to um, sometimes to be able to know when exactly a key was pressed. So if you're doing a study for, for reaction time, for example, um, you might want to, um, um, want to estimate how long it took somebody to respond. So we can get this quite easily by giving another argument to um, one of these key functions called time stamped. So what we want to give it is a, is a clock. So we need to make a, a clock. Okay, so we'll define our clock. Okay, so we're going to listen to all keys, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, so now we, we have a clock, it's going to be tracking the time, and we're going to tell this keys function about the clock. So we're going to give the time stamped argument, and we're going to pass it in our clock. So now if we save it and run it, all right, so it's waiting for me to press a key, so I'm, I'm going to press a key now. And you can see that now what gets returned in keys is a pair of items. So the first is the um, string representation of the key that was pressed, and the second is the time that it was pressed. So this time is relative to this clock, um, its internal timer. So for example, let's try and get it to say 10, uh, 10 seconds. So we start it. So it's sitting there waiting, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm a little bit off, but you can see that it's um, given us this, um, both the, the key that was pressed and the time that it was pressed. So it's a, a, sim a simple way that we can um, get um, an indication of response uh, timing. Okay, so going to our objectives. So it's so quite a straightforward one in this screencast. We just wanted to be able to collect responses from the keyboard. So we've used this in the past using these get keys and wait keys functions. And now here we've seen how we can um, look at the output from these functions to know what key was pressed and also uh, use some uh, timing um, indicators to know when it was pressed. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.